Okay. Um, so yeah, we can we can go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks everybody for coming and and many thanks to Emanuele for giving this talk on correlation bounds and all that. Uh, so whenever whenever you'd like to, please take it away. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing your faces. So if you uh, if you can switch on your camera, uh, I think they will be more fun. I'm not the one who, who's organizing this, but uh, I think it could be fun to see each other. Uh, hey, hi. Thank you. Uh, Shabarich, Colin, Pei, hi. Um, yeah, so um, it's fun to see each other. I hope that you have some questions and um, and we can have a chat. So um, I'll be talking about something which I spent uh, a huge chunk of, of my life thinking about. So, you know, you can make me feel bad <laughs> just by leaving the talk or like yawning. Um, anyway, so I spent a lot of time. So, you know, the more, the more people are, are, are get interested into this, I think the the happier I am. So I hope that I can uh, interest some of you. Um, yeah. So uh, let me. Um, of course, I find it very exciting. But uh, you tell me what what you think. I'm trying to move this window a bit. Okay. So uh, first, uh, two announcements. Uh, so. Um, um, I wrote a survey about these things uh, a long time ago in 2008, and actually I just revised it uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so this is on my homepage. Um, so this is up to, to date, to my knowledge. Uh, with all these problems that I've been talking about now, uh, it's mostly pointers, but there's a few proofs inside. Um, so if you want to know more, you should look at that. Uh, I'm also writing a book. Um, it's on my homepage, the draft. Uh, so if you uh, take a look, let me know what you think. It will be fantastic. I'm receiving feedback from many people. Some people are also using it in their courses. Uh, yeah. All right. So um, this is one possible view of complexity theory. So um, it looks like a pyramid. There is a huge problems like P versus MP at top. Um, okay, so P versus MP is the challenge of proving that some problem is hard for computers, okay? Some problems that we, that we care about um, is hard. Um, and so one view is that, you know, it's at the top of the pyramid and, and there is many problems throughout that you need to, you know, solve to like slowly climb the pyramid and go the way to the top, okay? So what are these problems? It's something that people have studied for a very long time, I mean, long time in computer science, uh, like circuits, circuit over bounds, um, communication complexity, um, you know, uh, rigidity, rigid matrices, uh, lots of works on that too, uh, polynomials. Okay, so this is one view. This is for the basis that somehow you solve all these things and then you go up to versus MP. So I'm here to uh, propose a, a different view. Uh, different view is that uh, the pyramid is actually is upside down. Uh, P versus MP is, is still at the top, but somehow there is a, hopefully, or uh, there is fewer, there is sort of few problems that one needs to understand to start making progress. Okay, uh, so it's just a handful of, pro of problems, uh, maybe only one or two that really are the, uh, you know, that really block us from getting some insight into P versus MP. Okay, uh, and a good question is what what problem goes here? Okay, well, what is like? Uh, this is something that one, one of the things that I spent uh, a lot of time thinking about uh, uh, in my works. Uh, uh, so, uh, what, what is like the, 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 the simplest possible thing that we don't know how to how to do, and which blocks process in, progress in complexity theory? Okay, and I'm here to propose a specific problem. So let's uh, uh, let's take a look at a bunch of problems at the front of P versus MP. Okay. So, uh, so one of them is proving circuit over bounds. Okay, so I'm not going to be precise, but you know, proving super polynomial circuit over bounds, but even like it's super linear, even super linear for, for for log depth, even for constant depth. So there's like a gazillion different versions here. Um, other one is is uh, exhibiting matrix uh, which are rigid. Okay, this is something which was um, proposed by Valiant. Um, so matrices which are uh, uh, so a matrix has rank can have a high rank. 
or the rank you want the matrix that is far in Hamming distance from uh, low rank vertices. So it's a notion of, of approximation, although it was not cooked this way at the beginning, and it was not cooked this way in a gazillion other papers, so, so, so people don't, don't really realize, but it's just average case complexity. Okay, so the, the notion of simplicity is uh, low rank matrices, and you want typical thing, an object which is far, which is different uh, in many inputs from a simple object, so from a low rank uh, vertex. So, and there's the people that tried worked very hard to all these things. Uh, um, and one is proving uh, correlation bounds for polynomials. So these are polynomials in n variables. I'm going to be precise ab about this. This is just to show pictures, uh, proving uh, given functions uh, which uh, differ on average uh, from any low degree polynomial very often. Okay. Um, and another one is uh, multi party communication complexity. This is this fascinating model, the number on, on uh, forehead. Uh, where, where the input is divided and people com communicate. Okay, and here we're stuck at log players, um, and, you know, uh, since the early 90s, and people have, have no idea uh, how to, how to uh, beat that. Um, and so I'm going to put an arrow now, if from A to B, if progress in one box requires progress on something else. Okay, something which is not too hard to see is, is actually that. Uh, um, if you want to prove a circuit to lower bound, you know, strong enough, but it's not going to be very strong for this implication, uh, you actually have to prove first the correlation bound for polynomial two. So, in other words, if you have a function which correlates well with low degree polynomial under every distribution, I'll be precise about this in a second, then in fact you can do min max and you can write this function as a small circuit. Okay, just because, okay. Okay, this is kind of like the simplest example, but there is other stuff that, that it's not as well known. Uh, matrix rigidity implies the correlation bound for polynomials. This is uh, not as well known. So here the parameters uh, uh, is different. Like for matrix rigidity, um, you usually look at like you know maybe the, the distance to a matrix is maybe I don't know 0 0.1. So you have to modify in you know, a constant fraction of the entries. Well, for correlation bounds, you're looking at something like very close to half. Half parent epsilon. Okay, so this is stuff that's hard. 0 0.1 is easy for polynomials. Oh, sorry, I cannot go back. Uh, hmm. I was used to control Z. Well, okay, should I use PDF? Okay, well, hopefully it's gonna work out for the rest. So um, 0 0.1 is easy for polynomials, but one, one half parent epsilon is, is not, okay? But there is this implication. So this implication has some uh, some, some content that uh, if you can, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, if you have a function which, which slightly correlates with function, actually you can boost the correlation and write the function uh, with uh, uh, make the function much closer to a low rank matrix. Okay. And by now you must have guessed it, but even multi-party conversion complexity implies that this is something which is also not uh, well known. So beating the famous log n uh, barrier implies correlation bounds. This is something which is even less clear. Like here I'm talking about worst case complexity, 100%. Okay, here I'm talking about this half parent epsilon. Okay, and there is no simple min max that I can do like 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 circuit, but still there is a way. It's not too complicated. But there is a way to show that, that if a function uh, correlates well, then in fact you can cook up a multi-party problem that gets the function right every time. Hmm. Every time. Uh, and there's more. Uh, recently, people have come up with some Fourier conjectures. I'm going to talk about that. And uh, it, it was shown that, uh, and these Fourier conjectures were really made to avoid going through correlation bounds. But later, it was shown. Um, in paper that I'm going to be discussing, um, that even proving those conjectures actually implies a nucleation bound beyond what we what we can do. So, but now you you figure out that that my view is this. Okay, so <laughs> if I had to pick, uh, you know, for what it's worth, if I had to pick one one problem which is uh, fundamental to as many things as possible and as simple as possible, I'll pick understanding correlation bound for polynomials. Okay. And this thing formally implies all these other things. Okay, I'm going to be precise now about 
In fact, I'm going to be precise uh, right now. So what is this problem? Okay, here's a challenge for you. You can think about it tonight. Uh, find an explicit function, a Boolean, okay? And some distribution X on the input, such that for every polynomial P of degree D, the probability that the polynomial uh, over X uh, computes the function correctly is at most half plus epsilon. Okay, so half is trivial because you can just guess at random. So here you can say that you cannot do much better than guessing the function at random. Okay, of course, there's epsilon, there is D, and there is P. Okay, so all these things, uh, um, the, sorry, there is epsilon and D. Uh, so th there is different trade-offs. <clears throat> so, Could I ask a quick question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please do, Peter, I was about to ask, yeah. Yeah, so this degree D here, this is, um, you know, because at least um, I, th I think in this audience, uh, when we think of degree, we think of the Fourier expansion of a Boolean function, and then we look at the degree of the real polynomial that is the extension yeah. of... You know, yes, yeah, sorry. Should, the degree? Uh, yeah, this, I should emphasize, uh, this P now is mapping uh, just simple M bits to one bit, okay? So it's, it's uh, the polynomial over F2. So it mm -hmm. just, yeah, should measure it. So X1 times X2 plus X3, okay? And plus, and times the work uh, mod two. Right, okay. So like parity would be degree one Parity would be degree one, yes. And the and function would be degree and, and, n. And. Got it. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So it's not a real polynomial, it's a Boolean polynomial. Uh, but um, one justification for my sloppiness is that amazingly, uh, maybe this is going get, to get, get you more interested, uh, this is open even for real polynomials. So even a very weak conjecture in which equality is treated over the reals, which means if the polynomial outputs pi or three, it's a mistake. So it's to my advantage. It makes my problem easier, even that's even that's unknown. So even getting a Boolean function, which has correlation that with every real problem, when every error counts towards you, it makes your life easier. Every every non-Boolean values make you make your makes your life easier. <laughs> even that is is hard. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I guess that justifies a bit being sloppy about it. Is is there any? This, 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 it's a great question. Any other questions from the audience? Good. I have a question. Yeah. Um, looks like degree D does not uh, participate in this inequality. So why not to say for? Yeah, yeah. Yes, so, so, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not, not, this is just a definition. So, and and here's what's known, okay? Let me just finish this and then see. So two things are unknown. So this, uh, in, the, in the edis, you know, the Rasmus from Rask, they prove that you can make epsilon to be D over root N. There are functions, okay, which have this distance from degree D polynomials, okay? This is one trade-off. Then there is another trade-off uh, in the 90s, the BNS uh, work, the multivariate work in plain implies, although it was not written down, but implies this. That for, for functions like GAP or even Motri, you can get this. Uh, epsilon is exponential, it's more in N over two to the D. Okay, so does that, does that, this is what's known. So uh, this is, a, a, to my, um, uh, to my mind, this is a very strange set of affairs. In fact, you can prove these things even for the same functions. So, uh, kind of like, um, so anyway, I'm, I'm not going to waste time with this, but, uh, so these are two curves. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to draw them to scale. Uh, so this is impossible and this is impossible. Okay. Uh, and, um, uh, dot here that's unknown is this. So it's still open to prove uh, for degree log n to get epsilon one over n. Okay, so give me a function that uh, for every polynomial of degree log n has correlation at most half plus one over root n. This is unknown. And formally, you can find all the proofs in my survey, solving this this specific version, this setting of parameters, uh, 
it's formally required for any for progress on any of the four of the four provinces which I don't on the on the on the previous slide. Okay, it's not equivalent. There are no, but it's required for that. Is that uh, who's, who's talking? Pata? Is it who's are you? Yes. That, yes. Okay. Did I answer the question? Does yes. Yes. Cool. Okay. So think about it tonight. Um, okay. Uh, so anyway, how, how much time is, is this? Like uh, forty-five minutes, an hour? Yeah, anywhere in there. Good. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna uh, do now, I'm gonna tell you about a, a couple of a couple of recent results on collection bounds um, and some more recent results about pseudorandom gen generators, uh, which are uh, related to proving collection bounds. And it's sort of like an angle that people have, have tried. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you briefly about uh, uh, an attempt that was made. Uh, there's a paper in, uh, by these people here um and um i'm just gonna be brief it's just, it's just to sort of like lead into a next thing that i'm gonna be talking about um so they define a notion of local co correlation which actually is similar to something it's a very simple notion it's similar to something actually which was studied earlier um like expected bias so you're looking at um you set some variables uniformly at, at random, okay? And, and some variables are left alive, and then you look just over those are left alive, what's the bias of the function, okay? It's kind of like, you take a restriction if you want, then you look at the bias also, or what's left, okay? And you compare it to the bias overall. This is the bias overall, you compare how well when you take, pick some, what's the bias on what's left compared to, to the original bias over the, the whole thing, okay? So. They prove like a, a very nice result uh, that um, the you know this uh, expected bias thing or lo local correlation is is small uh, for degree D polynomials uh, where you're allowed to set um, you're allowed to keep alive um, uh, a number of variables which is um oh, sorry yeah so you're allowed to uh, fix uh, all but uh, just uh, uh, exponential in d number of variables okay? so it's something which just depends on d no no it's not very good but just depends on n and, and given using this they can prove some other correlation bounds which uh, were known um, and the conjecture that in fact uh, um, you could uh, reduce this s to like polynomial and this would imply some uh, uh, Dream correlation bounds that you know would solve all these things that I've been talking about. Um, so in a paper um, with um, a PhD student of mine and a undergrad here at Dortist, and we've actually we given a counterexample. Uh, in fact, we rule out uh, uh, even a very weak form of what they ask, and we should that the, what they prove is the best possible thing that you can ask uh, that you can prove for polynomials. And uh, and I'm saying this just like to show you how you know. That the intuition is hard to get about these things and they are very powerful. So, and I'm just going to give you a super quick sketch, but you can start with the tribes uh, DNF. This is it's a, it's a D DNF, it's a node of nth, um, and it's read once. Okay. And uh, it's known uh, that, uh, or you can prove it, uh, um, that you can get sets which are fairly large, S, and the expected. Um, the expected bias. Um, so, okay, you can find sets which are fairly large, such that um, they, um, so it's a very large set, and you, if you fix anything except the set, uh, this basically already fixes the, the, the tribes to, to one, okay? So, um, now you have to think of who's big and, who, and who's small, but this is going in the direction that I want. Uh, so th there is like a fairly large set, like almost linear. And if you fix anything else, if you restrict anything else, it's very likely the function is fixed to constant already. Okay, it's a very, it's a non-trivial pr pr property. Uh, sometimes it's called the influence of, of, of the, the inputs to the tribes. 
function and using this uh, and some trivialities you can show that uh, some trivial manipulation that the, the local correlation is also is also large okay um okay so because if i fi just fixing the static fixing so on average the the expected bias will be good okay and now i'm good because um it's known that you can you can approximate constant depth circuits by low degree polynomials okay so there's a way to re to replace this or with, with a polynomial okay this is one reason why this model is very interesting uh you can approximate this by a, a, a polynomial and uh and that's it so uh, without sacrificing the, the previous stuff okay so um you can uh, do this and so you get the log, log n degree phenomena which has this, uh, this large quantity and this this gives a counter example to this uh, chhlz conjecture okay um so i'm just catching the proof so is there any question about the high level content so this is to say that there may be we need some new attempts some new directions so um there's a conjecture in, the, in this paper uh, that uh, you know um, I just said it. So, if you look at the correlation of these polynomials with the mod three function, this is just the sum of the bits, and you check if it's zero. Mod three um, symmetric polynomials uh, maximize the correlation. Okay, so it seems like completely ridiculous. I mean, we've been thinking about you know this extremal stuff like forever. It's always false. Okay, prove that this thing is false. Okay, I don't know. Um, in fact, it's true for, for, for degree two. So we can prove that for degree two polynomials, the best, uh, the best uh, correlation polynomials are symmetric. Okay, and there's some new technique here. This is somewhat interesting, and it's a it's long story to, to be said, maybe too long, even for me, but uh, if, you, if you change the moduli, if the polynomials are mod three, and you look at the conversion model two, actually symmetric is not the best. So this thing was sort of surprising to us, uh, but if, if the polynomials are mod two, which is what I get about, because it's the cleanest model, and you look at mod three punch, and actually symmetric is the best. And um, we also look at some spe special classes of degree three polynomials, and they, it's verified, you know, and I think it's not beyond the sky that you, you can settle if this thing is true or false for degree three po polynomial, you know, it's just degree three, um, you know, I hope that some of you can get interested in, the, in this question. Uh, you know, uh, again, just degree three polynomial. And there's many barriers that people have proposed, and we make a case that this thing, this conjecture actually avoids all of them. There's even some barriers to, to progress which were devised especially for polynomials. Uh, some very nice works uh, there, but. Um, um, you can read the paper and see that uh, uh, the, the, the reason why they don't apply to this. Now, of course, you can see defaults, so that doesn't mean any, but at, at least uh, there is no immediate roadblock for this. Okay. Uh, so it's just, just, just a nice, uh, like, uh, you know, um, with a question about which polynomials maximize the correlation with mod 3. So, sorry, is the domain still the hypercube or is it the? Yeah, the... yeah, so then uh, that's what makes this stuff very fun. So here, the mod three, you can do, you can think of it in two in two ways. Um, there is the the boolean uh, mod three, or there is there, there is a, the boolean version, or there is the the complex. So the complex version, you take omega, which is the third root of unity, and you you raise it to the sum of the bits. So this would be either this, this, or this. You have three different complex numbers, or you can make the boolean. So the, this is balanced. This thing is not balanced. We, we more likely, so you, you can define correlation in both cases. Um, symmetric are, are are the best, but there is some. I see. Uh, yeah. So there is. Uh, so for the mod three, uh, anyway, it's long story. But for the complex version. Symmetric is always the best for the Boolean. There is this issue that's balanced, so that complicates a bit things. But for infinitely many n, uh, in fact, for half the n, for, for any interval, for half the n, uh, symmetric is the best. And for the other ones, we don't know for sure. 
by at least for those with symmetric so hmm. uh, yeah yeah so that's the, that's the, the whole story okay uh, any other thoughts Cool. Sorry, maybe if I could, yeah. uh, I just want to understand. So um, the conjecture is that for any function from the hypercube to yeah. uh, third roots of unity, let's say the the best the best correlating polynomial of of degree three is is symmetric. No, is for that the, no, for for oh. Dimitri function. For Dimitri. Uh -huh. we're sorry we're comparing the symmetric polynomials to, to the motri to... function is just a sum of the bits here. oh the oh the aha uh aha -huh. uh -huh. literally, literally the single sorry. function yeah it's just one function yeah it's just one function yeah it's, just one function. Yeah, just... Okay. It, it, it's the fact that you sum of the bits and you check if it's zero or motri. right it's it's like kind of like parity but but okay it's, yeah and you can think of it as boolean or which is not, as not, or you can think of this complex valued. And here would be, so here it would be, the regression would be, uh, so P of X is up within either, you know, uh, zero, one or minus one. It's a Boolean value, you multiply to this omega. So if if you look at this picture, like you take a complex, you either take it here or you flip it, you take it the negative, you, you sum, okay? So the, 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 the problem I can try to, um, you know, the, the problem will put signs in front of these uh, three complex lines and try, try to make it uh, make the sum as close to zero as possible, or or, um, or not, or, or try to make it very far. Right. So sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So you you have to prove that you have to prove that the problem cannot put signs that make these complex numbers uh, uh, sum to something very far from zero. Like like if 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 the problem could always you know. Um, could always put like a minus sign here, a minus sign here, and always plus one here. Then you will get, you know, this, uh, this, and this, right? So if if you sum these things, you will get something which is very far from zero. If the problem I put like random signs, actually they would sum to to zero. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Um, so you know, it's. Uh, Central function, I mean, the Rasmus Molensky papers, they deal with Motri since the 80s. So, I mean, people sort of spent a lot of time on this. And um, it feels uh, reasonable enough that one can analyze this exactly for degree three polynomials, but we have not been able to do that, of course. Okay. So, uh, so random generators, so, so uh, are, they, you know, they are uh, explicit. Uh, low entropy distributions that uh, look random to polynomials. Okay, so you have a polynomial in n variables, so you have a distribution in the variables, and the polynomial cannot distinguish that from a uniform. Okay, and these things are actually equivalent to correlation bounds if the error is small. So in half, half minus epsilon correlation bounds, so you can use you know the Nissan generator to get the PRG, and if you have a PRG which has very small error, that implies a correlation bound. Now. The case of large error remains unclear. So conceivably, there is a completely different uh, approach um, that doesn't use any collision bounds uh, to get PRGs surrounding generators with error one third. Okay, we don't know. Um, the only way that we know how to construct those things with error one third is to start with super strong collision bounds. There could be a completely different setting. I, I spent like a, a little amount of time thinking about that, and I wasn't able to, to say much. There could be a completely different proof that doesn't that doesn't uh, use that. Uh, we don't know. Okay, um, but yeah, all the constructions are of the form that uh, would uh, yeah they require things with small error. Um, so. The state of the art for, for polynomials is from this this paper. So, so the construction actually from the, the original paper with uh, Bogdanov, um, and the idea in, in hindsight is simple. So if you want to full degree the polynomials, I'm going to start with the distribution for degree one polynomials. I'm going to make d copies, and then I'm going to sum uh, these d copies, just XOR bitwise, 
and get a distribution for the for the gradient. And this thing, this thing is true, and it can be analyzed. Uh, you know, in this last paper, uh, there is the what's still the the best known analysis. Uh, you can analyze this up to degree um, like Klogen. Get the same barrier for the multi-party always Klogen. And beyond is 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 uh, unknown. Uh, but in fact, there is some very recent result, somewhat recent result uh, that does analyze it but over large fields. Okay, I'm gonna talk about it in just a second. Before that, uh, I wanna talk about something else. So this error that was at the beginning. So because of the impasse that we had, uh, people had proposed a different approach, which is called the polarizing uh, random walk. Okay, it's a beautiful beautiful uh, way to construct the generators. Uh, and by the way, you can read more, there is a survey by Atami and um, someone else. Uh, it's called unconditional uh, generators, and you, there's like you know many pages just on this, so it can give you an excellent background. So to use this for polynomials, uh, you need to bound a certain uh, quantities which involve Fourier analysis. So this, this now goes to what you were saying, Joseph, about the Fourier analysis. So now <laughs> the polynomial is over F2, but you can think of it as a real value of function and you can do the, the Fourier analysis. So these are two conjectures which were uh, put forth that you know if you if you sum the Fourier coefficient, if you sum the absolute values of the Fourier coefficient of, of, of size two, uh, you get a bound uh, which is a power in D, D square. Okay. And similar thing when you sum uh, size k. So they're not quite comparable, but they show that even this, even this for large K, this weaker dependence on D would, would suffice to get some new two results. And this was exciting because it didn't seem to require any correlation bounds. It was, does not use the Nissan approach, uh, but uh, he was shown in this paper. Um, that in fact, even something weaker than this uh, implies new correlation bounds okay it's not somehow at the beginning it's not obvious but um it's a it's it's a you know two paragraphs proof i'm not gonna do it now but it's really simple um once you see it right so i can define a, a function which is kind of like kind of like majority and this basically takes the role of this uh, sum of the size two coefficients and if you basically the correlation with this function ends up being uh, uh, the sum of the Fourier coefficients. Okay, so if um, if the sum is small, then the, the correlation is small. Okay, so it's uh, it's not hard, but it requires some non-trivial machinery uh, like uh, hyperconjunctivity to bound the things. But it's it's like super simple. So. Even this approach, which at the beginning was not uh, thought to require collision bounds, even this shown to actually uh, require them. Okay, so uh, we actually, so ideally, I would like to just refute these conjectures. I believe that they're, they're false. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it. I, 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 I tried. And other people have tried to. So the, the best that I can do, uh, in, you know, is this connection here that it will be hard to prove for sure. Uh, I want to prove that they're false. I don't know. Um, so what I could do, um, you will need to analyze the correlation with this function here, and I don't know how, how to do it. So instead, I'm gonna I'm going to analyze the correlation with majority. Okay. So uh, I proved, you know, we proved in this paper some uh, new correlation bounds, so which the goal was to refute refute the conjectures but they don't um but a, a cool thing that uh, <clears throat> you may not be you may not be aware of is that um the correlation with the majority function is open so this sounds kind of like shocking because uh since smolensky smolensky proved uh, uh smolensky proved that the um, so here it's important which distribution you have in mind. So Smolensky, um, 
if you know proved that uh, the collection with majority is d over root n so for degree d the collection is one over uh, root n over the uniform thin, thin distribution so um this uh in, in this paper it's shown that it's actually tight over the uniform distribution so i i can give you a polynomial which matches this over the uniform distribution it's not the it's not a terribly hard construction, but um, you know it was not obvious to me. Uh, you can look at the paper; uh, it's uh, um, you know it's somewhat delicate. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of binomials, but uh, this, this is what it is. Uh, but this is not uh, the end of the story because uh, in this correlation, the way I define it, I want to know the answer for every distribution. Like meaning, I want to know could there be a distribution. Um, that's even harder for polynomials, okay? Or, or this is it. And this is unknown. Uh, one new claim is, is this, that under every distribution, you can do how much? Can, does anyone have any guess? So I just told you that you can get correlation which, which is d over root n for uniforms. Do you have any guess what would be the correlation for every distribution? So I'm, gonna, I'm going to exhibit polynomials which have slightly worse correlation but over every distribution. Any guesses what to put here? Just say something. Someone who who, who hasn't spoken? Maybe poly d over root n. Good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that's a good guess. Who was, who was talking? Is that? Who was talking? Uh, it's Colin. me. It's Colin. Yeah. Hey, hey Colin. It's pretty good, pretty good, good, good guess. So the, you can do, I can do at least, maybe you can do better. I can do um, quadratic in um, um, quadratic, which means that, uh, yeah, quadratic, which means that, uh, um, uh, right, so um, the correlation is quadratic, which means it's closer to half. Okay, uh, so it's still not trivial, but it's not, it's not as good. It's, it's, it doesn't get as good as d over root n, but it gets to d square over n. Okay, so you can get at least this, you can get at least this far from half under every distribution. So let's just think of D being one or two. Okay, so Smolensky uh, showed that, uh, you know, um, a, well, actually, this is the idea, the tightness, so that the, you, you can get um, correlation one over then, constant one over then. I can even, over every, every distribution, you can get correlation constant o, 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 over n. And, Conjecture that this thing is tight, okay? You cannot do, um, you know, the correlation with the opposite the most that. Okay? And, and this, this seems, should, should be able to sit to do this. Uh, I don't know how to prove it. And if you can prove this, then maybe this gives you some idea of now you can prove it even for this uh, other function which I had before, which are the, the sum over pairs. And do, you know, if, if you could prove a tight result on that, then maybe you can disprove the, the conjectures. I mean, uh, so it yes. <laughs> could be a long way, but uh, this, this, this is what it is. Okay, so one thing that uh, I can show is that this conjecture is true in the specific case of d equals to one for linear polynomials. Now, it sounds completely uh, stupid, like uh, why am I even wasting a bullet uh, out of this? But in fact, it's not uh, completely stupid because this already, this already requires going beyond the small s right? This bound here gets you one, one over uh, root n over the uniform. I'm claiming that I have a different distribution of which the bound is not one over n, it's one, it's one over n. Okay, so you need to go beyond uh, uniform distribution for this. 
and, and the distribution is you know you sort of natural you just take two Hamming weights and you alternate between uh, these two okay as opposed to getting any possible Hamming weight you just have two slices of the cube and you alternate between the two so it the conjecture is actually more specific that if you take d Hamming weights like this uh, that will give you that this bound is, is is tight okay and this, this seems to be could be true but uh, it's not easy to to prove um, you can look at the d equals one case it's really to me is a little bit technical um you know uh, you're analyzing the bureau of this, of this polynomial over just the slice and now you have more slices and it gets gets more complicated um but this is what it is okay any any questions on this okay uh, so i think uh, i'm just gonna um, take a few minutes to talk about something more recent about um, uh, surround generators uh, but I'm, maybe i'm not gonna go, go to uh, the proof too much unless so i'm gonna stop and then if there's questions again go more so um again uh so random generals for polynomials so i'm gonna i'm looking at uh, a generator which maps uh you know s bits into field elements so so now i'm going to work over an arbitrary finite field f i'm going to comment on this in a second you want that the statistical distance of the value of the, of the polynomial over the generator or uniform will be close most apps okay so this now makes sense it's not just a bit it's a bit element okay um so there is two lines of works one is the one for small fields the, the one that i mentioned before so the now and now uh do the, the degree one case and then it was the sequence of works that i'm that i'm um that i mentioned that you know the the, the last analysis is still the, the best that's 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 known this is the the framework of some in the independent copies so this gives you seed length which is log n plus exponential in d so when this is less than uh, log n this thing is uh, non-trivial if this log n it doesn't give you anything and the big question of my life is whether this thing uh, um, works even for d larger than log n okay so we don't know surprisingly we don't know people uh, not only me uh, have tried very hard to give a counterexample to this and the, and the field okay so we don't know conceivably this thing works very well even when d is like you know maybe n to the point one even but even a uh, log square n probably missing so a different uh, uh work is for large fields actually there, there is like another paper by bogdano um that uh, so um, it's a long story but it reduces this problem threat of a heat inset problem uh using algebraic geometry and then uh you can construct optimal uh Heat insets, okay, there's lines of works here for those things. And with that, it gives you seed length uh, uh, d, d, d to the four uh, log n. So, one nice thing is that uh, um, this works even when the d is very large. It works even for d like uh, n to the point 0.1, okay, it gives you some nice, th nice, nice things. Uh, on the other hand, the dependence on this is not as good as you would like you would like uh d log n and this thing this, this approach actually cannot guess it length less than d square so the, there is like an algebraic ge ge geometry uh, reduction which is known that uh, cannot be pushed beyond uh, d square but beyond that um like, like something which was interesting in my opinion is that these, these are two lines which are completely different like they, they wouldn't be farther apart uh the second line for large field that was algebraic geometry hitting sets the first part was the summing things completely completely different constructions so uh it, it, we have this this paper it's on my home page with uh, Zerksen. uh we're actually able go back to analyze this uh, but over large fields okay we cannot um, extend this to the large fields uh. We give a, a new analysis of the um, that approach of of, of uh, summing um, that was even for large degrees. So even the one version for Boolean was limited to, to log n, as far as we know. But this one is going to work for even for large degrees as long as the field is uh, is uh, large enough. And this gets you new 
generators. So in particular, we can get optimal seed length, which is a D log N plus log F, if the field is, is, is large enough. So compared to the previous thing, you know, they had this, uh, you know, D to the power of four here, uh, we actually get D log N, which is a, the optimal uh, dependence. Okay. And there is some results that we can also, we can make the field as small as D, D, D to the power of four. Um, um, and this actually is the smallest possible that you can get using the veil bound. And the veil bound is used in, in every work about the, the equity distribution of polynomials, including uh, this one. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, one goal that's left here is to combine one and three, like make the feed as small as the before while simultaneously getting the optimal seed length. Uh, there is some questions which we you know we raised which if addressed should should make it uh, uh, should make it work which is basically i think it's a very very nice question i've been trying to work on it for a long time but um it's hard to get people with the with the knowledge um so it's um it's conceivable that you can improve the veil bound for the specific polynomials which come come in our construction okay um and then and then you will need to be and then you know if something that seems conceivable is true you will you will be able to combine the two things it's kind of like now you pay this loss because uh, you, you use the bell bound in what looks like a very suboptimal way um okay i'm just gonna i think i'm gonna stop here so i'm gonna, I'm gonna spend uh just one minute about um the proof overview of these last results and then uh, uh, the question so uh there's actually other notion there's there's several notions that have not been used before um uh, in our work which which maybe makes it uh you know possible that you can get something else so one is the notion of uh, in the composability okay uh which, which was not which was not using in this constant so a polynomial is decomposable if you grad it as the composition of a univariate polynomial of degree at least two with some other polynomial h. Okay, and there is a lemma. This is something which seems very useful and it was not applied as far as we know. That if g is indecomposable, so it cannot be decomposable, then in fact its distribution is close to uniform. Okay, you give me any polynomial, if you cannot decompose it it's quote unquote a prime polynomial, then in fact its output distribution of a uniform is close to uniform. Okay, it's, it's a nice result. Uh, it's not ours at all. Uh, it's, um, we take it by combining some stuff in algebraic geometry. Um, uh, 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 yeah, so what do we do? We kind of want to use this. So what we do, we, we, construct, we construct a family of, of polynomials uh, which have a few variables have low degree and the key thing is that they preserve in the composability so if you start so if you plug them into, into something and the something gets decomposable then even the original thing is decomposable okay so it, it's late i'm just going to say two, two more sentences about the proof so the generator it just outputs the value of these polynomials f's okay and then if you give me any polynomial g, I want to show that, that it's fooled by by the this f. So the first thing I'm going to write, I'm going to decompose the g as much as much as I can in c composed to h. Now h itself, this, this is a key thing. Okay, it's a very simple thing, but something was really key to me. Um, h now is indecomposable because if you could decompose it, then actually c will not be the maximum degree choice. So I, de I decompose a G as CH, where C has the largest possible degree. So now H, H is the prime part of G in some sense. So now G of U, the distribution of uh, G of U is the same as CHU, obviously by definition. Okay, but now the, the key thing is that now H of U, because H is the prime part now, and, and by this lemma here, HU is uniform. So this just becomes a CU. And uh, because these polynomials also preserve in the composability, um, 
you know, H of the F is also in the, in the composable. So you, you can also, you can also uh, replace H U with H of the F's, and this is going to be the same as uh, uh, G of, of uh, the F's. Okay. So just one last thing: uh, where does this uh, sum mean general? So these F's, uh, these F's uh, are um, an algebraic version of this paradigm. So they're obtained by summing copies of monomials. So you, you can take monomials which full degree one polynomial, you sum them together, and that will be uh, the ratio of the Fs. So um, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to flash something just to uh, finish the talk. So uh, remember the picture um, and hope that uh, you have some some questions. And uh, even if you, if you don't know, I'm always happy to, to receive emails and do Zoom meetings. Uh, with anyone, so just uh, get in touch if you want to discuss any of these problems or your research. Thank you. Thanks so much, Emmanuel. Yeah, yeah any any questions? I see a hand hand clap. I think yeah. that's okay. Thank you. So, are you, are, are you guys all uh, students, or is there some other some faculty here or postdocs? I don't know these names. Yeah, I, I think we have a good mix uh, here. Yeah. Cool. If I if I could ask <clears throat> um, for any further thoughts you would have on this uh, this Fourier the uh, conjecture. Of I'm, yeah. I'm now forgetting the acronym of the names. So it's you know it, it, it the, the the phrasing of it is so appealing. Just take an L one sum of some slice of the of the Fourier spectrum. Uh, but so it's it's really nice to know it's in some sense harder than other yeah. things we've been trying for a while. Yeah, the problem um, is is a, is a very simple. You 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 use some stuff. Stravinka, you're like I think you can understand it like in two lines in. Two minutes because it just uses hybrid contractivity and i see i see yeah and 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 the the direction is one way right like there's no yes. not even a yeah. weak sense in which i don't i don't is. yeah uh um i vaguely remember uh that maybe I mean I think what's showing that the, the correlation with the function is the same as Yeah, the, um, yeah, the, I don't, uh, I mean, in some sense, the correlation with this function is basically just the sum of the frequency. So in some sense, it, it, is, right. it, is, it is an equivalent. But I think there's a step in the proof that makes you uh, just prove a bound in one direction, but now I don't, I don't I remember. See. Um, I see. But, um, Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so when you're referring to Fourier conjectures, uh, you mean always this uh, level k bound to k bound perhaps by d to the k, I guess. Right? And these are for, for polynomials mod two, or is are these also interesting for uh, open for Boolean degree deep, uh, not Boolean, Boolean, yes, degree deep uh, polynomial. Sorry, sorry. For real value of polynomials. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a good question. I don't know. Um, I would imagine that they are known to be true for real value polynomials, and so you would like to show them even for Boolean match, things get a little bit more difficult or something like that. But I, I don't. Uh, 
Um, yeah. Um, I just kind of see that uh, this kind of uh, in a quote for real, uh, for usual Boolean degree D functions, if something like this is true or not, I, I don't know. Uh, if for a function which has degree d um yes boolean function of degree d does this in a, but the usual not mod two usual because uh, there is always but what was i mean uh, boolean degree d the, it's it's very very small family of i mean it is like small it's very small very yeah small. i understand they depend on two to the d variables but it still doesn't say that this cannot hold yes do you want to have just the parity function like uh on the set of size k, for example, so they shouldn't hold, right? You shouldn't have, for, you shouldn't expect. No, for parity function, one times x, on just times the, x. On just, the, on just the set of size k, for example. I, I didn't quite hear. Parity function doesn't give counterexample here. Just the parity function, but only on k bits. Right, so it's a single monomial uh, of yeah. uh, support uh, on, on k variables, but that'll have, uh, because it's a single monomial that has like an L1. One, one, one is bounded by some integer, okay. Yeah. Uh, wait, what? Well, I, it just mean you shouldn't expect any such uh, bound, right? No, I still don't see counterexample. Maybe there are some counterexamples. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, thanks for the nice talk. Thank yeah, you. no, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, great questions. And I don't, uh, I don't, I just don't know. Um, yeah, no, for example, by head. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I. I, my guess. Just to say something would be that uh, um, they're probably known for uh, your setting, but I don't. I don't know. For sure. uh, um, because it's uh, yeah. In your view, do you think um, kind of algebraic geometry is the is the direction like where where this is all going? I don't know. I think I think I mean I think uh, I think I'm just gonna waste your time with with my answer. But I'll, uh, I think algebraic geometry has completely different goals, completely different techniques, completely different uh, history, and I think uh, I mean. You know, I think it can be used over this large field, but I think for the small fields, I mean, to me, it looks like you have to reinvent uh, completely different, uh, invent a different, completely different machine. Then maybe someone would call it algebraic geometry over small fields, but uh, maybe you can. I mean, one thing that we are trying this notion of in the composability to, to like port it to like the small field case, but it's a completely different beast. Okay, mm -hmm. even the, um, all these works, even by this, you know, Tao and Gowers, you know, um, right. uh, there's very different notions of uh, how, how you relate the bias of the polynomial over small fields to its structure is a completely different object. And this has been well known. And, and you know, it's very difficult. And it's basically no technique that anyone knows that is able to handle large degree polynomials over small fields and give some, re some reasonable structure. Uh -huh. Algebraic geometry works well if you if you know it uh, over large fields. Over small fields, they have these set of techniques uh, uh, which are very nice uh, and, and very complicated. But uh, there is no technique there are no of that gives you any useful structure over large degree. I see. Uh, so maybe there is a way to extend uh, those, but they all use. They all use kind of like a degree reduction, and they always end up being a square every time you lose a degree. So, like they all they all do that one way or the other. I see. So 
that's basically what we can do. We can reduce degrees by taking squares, or we can use basically large fields where things get much nicer and much smoother. And then, yes. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, Got it. Thank you. Yeah, no, well, I, I, yeah, I, I see we're past the hour. If any, if the yeah. uh, if one has any final questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, um, yeah, I'll say say good day to everyone. Okay. Thank you for the invitation. It was, it was good to talk here. Bye. Yeah, thanks very much. Take care. Bye bye.